how to make electrical estimating easy. Today we're going to be talking about how to take estimating and get the complicated out of it. The easiest way to make electrical estimating easy is very simple. Just learn how to estimate. Stop guessing. Stop trying to make it hard. Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Just don't try to start doing a bunch of new stuff. This has already been calculated out by people before us and uh, you don't have to make it complicated. The simple goal is just to provide a price that's low enough to win the project, but inclusive enough that when the project's over, you made money. You have to accept that you can't control your competition. Strive to be perfect for your company and let the prices fall where they fall. The low bid is not always the best bid. You must be confident in your bidding. You should never start changing the way that you bid just as soon as you lose a couple jobs. I often have a lot of estimators call me from time to time and they have lost a few jobs and they lose their focus and they say, would you look over what I've been doing? I've lost the last couple of jobs and my boss is getting a little worried. These are the same estimators that's won millions of dollars of work year after year and are very successful. You must have faith in your skills to estimate. That's the key to being confident. Some people call it guesstimation. But in reality, a lot of estimating isn't guesswork at all. Solid, written down in stone information that you can use time and time again and trust your numbers. Remember, losing a job doesn't necessarily mean that you did it wrong. Find what works for you and stay with it. Trust the numbers. When you sit down and dissect an estimate, you'll see that there's only a few parts. Lighting, gear, devices, branch lighting, branch power, motor feeders, your home runs, your panel feeders, low voltage if there is any, your quoted items, and miscellaneous. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you dissect this down and take one of these at a time, you're going to find that you can estimate with confidence. So you start by simplifying estimating and you break it down into two categories, the takeoff and the estimate. So we're going to start with the takeoff. So, in simple words, the takeoff is just the counting and measurement of everything that's on the plans. This usually consists of a lighting, lighting control, gears, devices, fire alarm if there is any, data, phone structure, cable, security, etc. This is something that you can achieve at 100%. Even a non-electrical person can count how many light fixtures and how many devices there are on a drawing and get that 100% right. As far as the takeoff goes, everybody should see this step exactly the same. For example, your competitor should have the same number of A light fixtures and the same number of duplex receptacles as you do. There shouldn't be any doubt of how many there, there are. By counting all the items until you get the same results twice, then you can be 100% sure that you have the right counts. I'm going to skip the branch lighting and branch power for now. We're going to move on to motor feeders, panel feeders. They're going to be perform performed much in the same way. The takeoff, we'll start with panel feeders. For the most part, estimators don't seem to enjoy this section too much, but it uh, really is easy, so it shouldn't be something to be dreaded. Just find the one line on the drawings. I've already visited to the sheet when you were counting your gear. I start by writing down all the feeders just as they show up on the one line. This is a simplified one line that we'll be looking at, but if it's a large one or a small one, the process is exactly the same. So you just start focusing in on what it shows. So we can see from the existing MSB2, we're going to be running a 4 inch conduit with four 600s and a number 3 ground. So I will record that and the same from here on all the way through. So I've started recording this here. So we have an existing panel MSB2, 400 amp 3 pole to a new panel H2, 4 inch conduit with four number 600 MCMs, one number ground. So I write that down for each of the feeders shown. The panel feeders is something else that you can get 100% correct. So 
there is a few more steps that you need to do. So you need to read the specifications and requirements and find out your raceway types, fitting types. Can you substitute with aluminum? So what this is meaning to you is, will well, I be running these feeders in EMT with set screw fittings or in rigid conduit? Will I use plastic bushings or grounding bushings, etc.? All this can make a big difference in your price, but it's going to spell it out the specifications what to use. Next thing you need to do is decide how much conductor you're going to include in each of the runs for termination. A general rule is between 15 and 20 foot, but you can use whatever you like. If you use the same adjustment each time, you're not going to have to think about it. It's going to save time and speed up the estimate. After you've written down the distances to all the panels above, you need to include how many 90s or other special kind of lifts that you might need. In case of the two transformers above, then you'll also need to include flex. For example, I've written down existing panel MSB2, 400 amp 3 pole, to new panel H2, 4 inch conduit, 4 number 600, 1 number 3, I'll need one LB, one ninety, and twenty foot extra conductor. I'll just repeat this step till I get all of the panel feeders completed. This becomes a simple task when you tack it line by line and not look at the whole job in general. Just look at the one line, write them all down, get it right, and then go find the distances. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to move on to motor feeders. Uh, a lot of people call this motor feeders, but actually it's just anything that takes a home run. It can be a rooftop unit, exhaust fan, water heater, anything that's a home run. We're going to group under and call it motor feeders. So let's move on to motor feeders. A simple hack to getting this right every time is just to start with your panel schedule. Without looking at the plans and trying to pick out all these feeders, it's easier just to look at the panel schedule. Just write down all the two pole and three pole items that's in the schedule, and you're going to be covered. Because if there's a feeder for it, there must be a breaker for it. So let's just glance at this simplified panel schedule here. We can see that out of this H2 panel, we're going to need to find a rooftop unit one through. 12 and a FAU 1. It even tells us the breaker size, the feeder size will be according to that. And it also can help us determine that we're going to most likely need a disconnect for these. So we're going to need 12 rooftop disconnects that we can match the counts that we made in our gear. So looking at that schedule above, we know that we're going to look for a rooftop unit 1 through 12 and FAU 1. Also like to take note of the voltage, breaker size, the speed in, speed in the item, and also the phase. So I would end up with a list that's like this. Rooftop unit 1, 48 volts, 25, 3 pole, name of 3R. From that information, I know that all the feeders that I must find are going to be listed here. I also have a list of disconnects to check against. And the final plus is just in case the size isn't indicated on the feeder, I can look at this and tell what size feeder I'm going to need to run for. From this point, all that's needed to do is just record the distance. It's as simple as that. We've addressed counting, which is easy as just counting each item on the drawing recording the panel feeders from the one line diagram, uh, motor feeders from just taking these directly from the panel schedules. So, so far, your takeoff should be just like your competitors, assuming that they took the time to get it correct like you did. Now all that's going to be left is your branch lighting and branch power uh, to record and put this into the takeoff, and then you're pretty much going to be finished. There are a lot of ways to accomplish these tasks. You can average the distance between each of the items, or you can scale each distance between the items, or you can average between the items and scale the home runs. You can elect to set your distance apart to cover getting your device above the ceiling and then scaling the rest. There's so many techniques that you can accomplish these 
task. And in reality, the branch isn't the biggest part of the project. It's going to be your feeder costs and your quotes. But you do need to get it right. So we have techniques for doing this as well. Of course, once the takeoff's complete, you have to turn it into an estimate. And there ain't no better way than with the Best Bid Hybrid Pro. The Hybrid Pro makes performing your takeoff with our built-in on-screen takeoff very fast. Then turning it into an estimate is just as easy. Just basically transferring the information with a click. If you want more information on how to complete your branch circuits and branch power, complete your estimate, or just call and talk about estimating, just give us a call or email. Also, don't pass up the chance to get the Best Bid Hybrid Pro for less than half price while you still can. This is not going to last forever. So bestbidestimating.com or info at 1CEES.com. Give us a call and let's talk about estimating. Uh, I'm here to help uh, shed the light on it. Thank you very much for listening. Have a blessed day.